he reigns forever and we love our father and our savior jesus christ so we're going to sing about him reigning over our lives each and every day glory to god
this morning to lift him up. Temple of faith, temple of faith, we are here this morning. We praise and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope that's what you came to do, is to lift his name on high. And we celebrate Breast Cancer Month to all of those that have survived and are going through right now. We just praise God for you. And for those that are here still, after they have lost a loved one to this horrible disease, we just lift you up right now. And we continue to pray for you and bless you and your son and our son, Jesus Christ.
Master. Pastor, yes. did you want here? Oh, okay. All right. Keep going.
heart together. Our hands are lifted high. We lift you high, oh God. Why does this
Lord. Amen. 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 Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Let's glorify God. Put those hands together. Mark, continue to sing that. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I want to thank Natasha and uh, Kimberly Miles. I saw those as I was coming into worship this morning, so we certainly thank you. Oh, they, uh, Deborah Hartman said, looking good, Mr. Johnson. Oh, look at him. Oh, man, I'm just showing Dr. Johnson. Ooh, Dr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, thank you, Sharon. Sharon, are you living in Atlanta now? Or are you living in Atlanta? I want to, uh, we're, last week, we preached, uh, we started this new series on grasshopper. We preached um, overcoming a grasshopper mentality. Today is a sequel to that sermon. It's a part two, uh, if you will, it's a part two of that. Uh, welcome, Ayu Daly. Ayu Daly works with Samsung out in Austin, Texas. So he has a hard hat because he works inside the facility. He put Temple of Faith Bible Church on his hard hat at work. We can, we can, I mean, that's amazing. So we certainly shout out Aya Deli uh, for what, for doing that. We appreciate him putting uh, our church, his church, his church on his helmet. So good to have back with us the June Kennington down in Jacksonville, Florida. Let us go to the 14th chapter of Numbers. I will not read the entire chapter, just a few verses starting at verse number one, the 14th chapter of Numbers. Then the whole community the whole community broke into loud cries and the people wept that night. All the Israelites complained about Moses and Aaron and the whole community told them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt or we only had died in the wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us into the land to die by the sword? Our wives and children become plundered. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? Look at this. Wouldn't it be better for now God has delivered them from Egypt but because they can't handle the pressure, they crack under pressure. And they say, wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? So they said to one or to another, let's appoint a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in the front of the whole assembly of the Israelite community. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who scouted out the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite community, the land we passed through and explored is an extremely good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us into this land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and give it to us. 
only don't rebel against God, against the Lord, and don't be afraid of the people of the land, for we will devour them. Their protection has been removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Somebody shout, the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. While the whole community threatened to stone them, the glory of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites at the tent of meeting. The Lord said to Moses, how long will these people despise me? How long will they not trust me despite all the signs I have performed among them? I will strike them with a plague and destroy them. Then I will make you into a greater and mightier nation than they are. But Moses replied to the Lord, the Egyptians will hear about it. For by your strength you brought these people up from the limb. They will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among those, these people. How you, Lord, have been seen face to face. How your cloud stands over them. How you go before them on a pillar by day and a pillar of fire by night. If you kill these people with a single blow, the nations who have heard of your fame will declare. Since the Lord wasn't able to bring these people into the land he swore to them, he has slaughtered them in the wilderness. Verse 17, so now may my Lord's power be magnified just as you have spoken. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in faithful love, forgiving iniquity and rebellion. But he will not leave the guilty unpunished, bring the consequences of the father's iniquity on the children to the third and fourth generations. Verse 20, then Moses begged, please pardon the people. 20, the Lord responded, I have pardoned them as you requested. Yet, sure as I live, as the whole earth is filled with the Lord's glory, None of the men who have seen my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt in the wilderness and have justified these ten times and did not obey me will ever see the land I swore to their fathers. I want you to look at your name and repeat this morning something that me. You can miss me with that noise. One more time. You can miss me with that noise. It is difficult to hear God with a whole lot of noise going on in your life. It is challenging to hear God with a whole lot of noise going on in your life. Repeat what it is difficult to hear God if you have a lot of noise going in your life. It, it's hard to feel a move from God if you have distractions daily in your life. It is, it is difficult and challenging to feel the power and the presence of God in the midst of noise. It becomes a Herculean 12 labor task of immortality to feel and sense the power and the presence and the perfection of God moving and working in your life if you wake up in noise, go to work in noise, come home in noise, go to bed in noise. You miss the blessings of God sometimes because of the noise. So look at your neighbor and say, turn down the volume. Now what happens here, we have to go back to the last chapter, which I preached 13 last week, that God had allowed Moses to send spies into the land, send 12 spies from the 12 tribes to scope out the land. And, 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 and they saw the flowing of milk and honey. They brought back gargantuan grapes that grew in that land. But 12, 10 of the 12 spies came back and said, the people in the land are too big. We cannot conquer it. And in, in, in their eyes, we, we, in our eyes, we are grasshoppers to them. And, and then, but two of the tribe, people who had gone out, Joshua and Caleb, said, we can take the land. But the people, when you come to the 14th chapter of the book of Numbers, they go with the majority that say, we can't do it. How many times have you messed up in your life because you went with the majority? How many times have you missed what God wanted you to have? God gave you the vision, but you told the vision to the wrong people people and they talked you out of what God wanted to do in your life. Just because they are in the majority does not mean that they were right. The majority in America is sanctioned slavery. The majority in America is gerrymandering uh, the reapportionment right now as we meet in this church. So just because the majority is doing it that doesn't mean it's right. I don't know about you but I would rather be in the minority with God than to suffer with the majority because me plus God equals a majority. Whenever God is with you, you're first and not last. Whenever God is with you, you're the head and not the tail. Whenever God is with you, you're in the front and not the back. Look at your neighbor and say, me plus God equals a majority. 
Good morning, Chairman Oz Nesbitt is worshiping with us today, the chairman of Rockdale County Government. So glad to have so many of my friends in worship this morning. So what happened? Because they listened to the majority, because they listened to the 10 and not the 2, because they cast their lot with the 10 and not the 2, because they bought into the horror and the fear. You see, look at somebody and say bonus time. If you fool with fear, fear will make you miss your blessing. Timothy is, is right, uh, Paul writes to Timothy, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. You, as the seasoned saints would say, you can't be scarified and get what God wants for you to have. So the people have now signed it with the majority. When we come to the 14th chapter of the book of Numbers, it says, then the whole community broke into loud cries. Look at somebody and say, loud noise. The whole group of people, over a million Jews, they are crying, they're making noise. It says, and the people wept that night. Now what's crazy, mother player, is that these people had not gone into the land. Only 12 people had gone to the land, but now everybody is in a tizzy. Everybody is shouting because they bought into the noise of the ten. They the message of the two and bought into the noise. Look at somebody and say bonus time. Some of you are miserable today because you bought into the noise. Some of you have missed what God wants you to have because you bought into the noise. Some of you are not where God has called you to be doing what God told you to do because you're bought into the noise. Look at somebody and shout no more noise. Welcome Deaconess Bettina Honester in Elberton, Georgia. And it says, and the, the whole community broke into loud cries. And the people wept. They cried. They, and my grandmother said they boo-hooed. You heard that before, Mother Player. Mom, you're too young and what boo-hoo is. Uh, uh, so look at this. They wept. They cried over the majority report. They are losing sleep over the majority report. They, they've lost their appetite because of the majority report. They've gained weight because of the majority report. They're afraid to come outside because of the majority report. If you don't watch it, the majority report will mess up your life. The majority report will cause you sleepless nights. The majority report will make you poor your hair out. The majority report will give you ulcers. The majority report will snatch your appetite. Look at your neighbor and say, watch the majority report. Now verse number two says, all the Israelites, they complain about Moses and Aaron and the whole community. Look at this. So what happened now? Because they bought into the George report, they are now rejecting leadership. They are rejecting. It, it was not the, the, the 10 in the majority who brought them out of Egypt. It was Moses and Aaron. It was not the majority who stood before Pharaoh and said, let my people go. It was Moses and Aaron. But on under pressure. They crack and they reject leadership. I don't care where, where you are. You have to submit to leadership on your job. You, If you're not the boss, somebody else is the leader. When you go to the doctor, if you haven't gone to medical school, you are not the leader. If you're not the pastor of the church, you're not the leader of the church. They reject all the good that Moses and Aaron had done. When people listen to the noise, they will forget what you have done for them. When people listen to the noise, they will ignore you. When people listen to the noise, they forget that you prayed for them when they were down and out. When they listen to the noise, they forget that you loaned them money you didn't have to loan when they listen to the noise. You see, the low noise will mess them up. The noise psychologically messes them up. So now the Bible says they complain. Moses had asked God to bring manna from heaven, but now they're complaining. Moses had asked God to bring quail from the sea, but now they are complaining. You need to understand this morning that people can be fake, phony, and fickle. People can be mean and moody. People can be unforgiving, unrelentlessly uh, ignorant. So what happens here? They have forgotten and they complain. Now look at what they say when they complain. If only we could have died in Egypt. 
it, we could have died in the desert. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land to buy, die by the sword? Not only do they question God, Moses, not only do they question uh, uh, Aaron, but the noise has become so bad that they now question the Lord. Who are you to question the Lord? How are you going to question somebody that said, let there be and be has been being ever since? How are you going to question somebody that makes a ground, ground brown cow eat green grass, churn yellow butter, and pump out white milk? How can you question somebody who said, let there be and be has been being ever since? How can you question somebody that gives, puts the same red blood in a white body and a black body and divides us by blood type? How are you going to question a God like that? How are you going to question a God who knows the number of hairs on your head, whether they be wig, weave, or braid? How are you going to question? How are you going to question a God like that? They don't just question. Moses, but they said, why is the Lord bringing us to the land to die by the sword? Now, this is what happened when you feed into the noise, because the noise told them they couldn't make it, but God had already told Moses that I'm going to give you that land. How dare you question what God has promised you? Don't you know that God keeps his word? Jesus says, before my word fails, heaven and earth will pass away. I have always said that God has put up heaven and earth as collateral against his word. I don't know about you, but has there ever been a day that the sun didn't come up? Has there ever been a day that the clouds didn't come out? Has there ever been a day that the Lord didn't bless you? He's blessing you right now. You can hear right now. You can feel right now. You can taste right now. You can dance right now. You can shout right now. I serve a right now. God, somebody shout right now. So they question Moses. They question Aaron and they question God. You see, when you listen to the noise, you will say stupid stuff. When you listen to the noise, you will say not ignorant, but ignorant stuff. When you listen to the noise, you forget the promises of God. When you listen to the noise, you forget that the same God that blessed you yesterday is waiting to bless you today. Somebody say the same God. Good morning, Eureka Evans told in Macon, Georgia. Now notice here, they question God. They said, our wives and our children will become plunder. They said, look, we're going to lose everything we got. Listen to Moses, God, and Aaron. We're going to lose our wives, our children. Listening to Moses and Aaron, the gold we brought from Egypt, we're going to lose that too. Listening to God, Moses, and Aaron, what they failed to forget was that everything they already had, God gave it to them. No matter what you're looking for this morning, what you already have, you need to shout about that. Whatever you waiting on God to bless you with next, you need to shout about right now. Whatever house you're praying for, thank God for the house that you got right now. Whatever car you're looking for next, you need to thank God for what you're driving right now. I know you want a new job and a more a better paying job. That's a great desire, but you better shout about the job you got right now. Somebody just take about five seconds and give God praise for what you got right now. I might not have everything, but I got something. I might not have what you have, but I got something. Somebody shout, I got something. Somebody shout, I got something. You see, you see, when you listen to the noise, you don't focus on what you already got. When you feed into the fierceness of the noise, you forget what God has already done. When you buy into the noise, you forget how good God is. So look at this. Now check this out. They said, wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? Look at this. Mother President said, wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? 
Look at this. I'm going to repeat it. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? Now, in Egypt, they were slaves. In Egypt, they had to make brick without straw. In Egypt, Pharaoh called all the all of the rules by all the shots. In Egypt, they didn't have Obamacare. In Egypt, they didn't have Medicaid or Medicare. In Egypt, they didn't have Blue Cross and Blue Shield. In Egypt, they didn't have MasterCard, Visa, or Medicare. An express, but they wanted to go back. They didn't have an ease in Egypt, but they wanted to go back. You can get folk out of Egypt, but you can't get Egypt out of some folk. How many of you have the Egypt mentality? God delivered you, but you trying to go back to what God delivered you from. God got your black butt out, and now you're trying to take your black butt back. I was in Washington, D.C. this week. One of my closest friends is a high-profile attorney in that city for a major tele, uh, telecommunications network. And we were having dinner, and they were catching me up on 30 years of this and that and brought everything up. And I said to them in the middle of the conversation, sometimes when God lets Lazarus die, don't go to the tomb and bring Lazarus back. If God let Lazarus die, sometimes you need to bury Lazarus. You need to drop a flower on the grave and keep on moving. Why would you go back to hate? Why would you go back to slavery? Why would you go back to poverty? Why would you go back to abuse? Why would you go back to neglect? Go where you are appreciated and not where you're tolerated. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. We welcome Monica Player. Monica, you right there in the front. What you doing? Look at this. They, they said, let us go back to Egypt. Verse number four. So they said to one another. Look at this. The noise has made them super crazy. They said to one another, let's appoint a leader and go back to Egypt. So Moses' leadership wasn't good enough. Obama's leadership wasn't good enough. So they said, let's go back to Egypt. Look at this. Let's appoint a leader and go back. You see, the noise made them forget how good they had it. The noise made them forget that God was working through Moses and Aaron step by step. But when you buy into the noise, you want to do your own thing on your own terms. I don't care how smart you are. You got to listen to somebody. I don't care how much money you make. You got to listen to somebody. Now you don't have to take advice, but you don't know it all. I don't know it all. But when you back into the noise, you think you can do it another way and not God's way. Oh, that, somebody need to hear that. When you back into the noise, you you can do it your way and not God's way. The Bible doesn't say the steps of a good man are ordered by the man. The Bible says the steps of a good man and a good woman are ordered by the Lord. You see, when you reject God's leadership, when you reject the man or reject the man or woman of God, that God has sent your way, you're gonna miss your blessing. You're gonna increase your stress. When you do it your way and not God's way, you're gonna have headaches, you're gonna have heartbreaks, you're gonna have disappointments, you're gonna have setbacks. God's way may be hard, but I'm gonna do it God's way. God's way may be lonely sometimes, but I'm gonna do it God's way. God's way may be up and down, but I, 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 I,
this morning. God didn't bring you this far to turn his back on you. You may be struggling, but God is still on your side. You may be having a difficult moment, but God is still on your side. You may be wrestling with this demon and that demon and that demon and this demon. There may be a demon in your house, but God didn't bring you this far to leave you. Ah, the Bible says, if God be for you, then who can be against you? The Bible says, I'm more than a conqueror. The Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Sister, I came to tell you, he is with you. Brother, I came to tell you, he Rachel Hamilton, he is with you. Deborah Holloman, he is with you. Deaconess Clayton, Deaconess Harsh, he is with you. Mother Claire, on the other side of 80 plus, he is with you. Monica, I see your hands in the air. I want to whisper in your ear, he is with you. Look at this. Look at this. They try to talk sense to the crazy people because these folk have gone cray-cray. Monica, remind me, I have a book for you. Uh, Dr. Johnson and I have a book to, for you to give to Dr. Howard. When I said cray-cray, I thought about it. We were at the we were at the Dove Awards the other night, and, 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 and they, they started playing Miranda's new song, Lazarus, as they had a commercial break. And, my, and I started saying, oh, she's sitting right here. Um, and, and Miranda said, oh, you embarrass me. She said, y'all got to forgive Dr. Wall. He has gone crazy. Cray cray. So, so the folk had gone cray cray. So they tried to calm them down. So what Joshua says, we scouted the land. The land we passed through and explored is a good land. I came to tell somebody, it is the will of God for you to be in a good land. Now I'm not talking about the land you live on the property, but the, the, uh, God wants you in a space and place where things are good for you. God wants you in a good land. In a good land. You're not struggling to pay your bills in a good land. They're not threatening to repossess your car or foreclose on your house. In a good land, you got good health and good strength. In a good land, you can sleep well at night. In a good land, you can smile in the midst of your storm. In a good land, you got a positive attitude. In a good land, you can rebuild your life. In a good land, you can put it back together. I mean, to shout, I'm in a good land. I need somebody in the sanctuary to shout, I'm in a good land. I'm in a good land. What does this suggest to us, Thelma Jackson? What this suggests to us? I'm not supposed to be in a bad place. I'm not supposed to be in a bad place in space. I'm not supposed to be where the buzzards are. I'm not supposed to be where the roaches are. I'm not supposed to be where the haters are. I don't want the negative land. I don't want the bad land. But I want my good land. Give me my good land. I'm going to dance in my good land. I'm going to shout in my good land. I'm going to wave my hands in the good land. Somebody shout good land. I need three more of y'all to shout. I'm in the good land. It is the will of God for you to be in the good land. Notice what he says. He says it's a good land. Verse number eight. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us into this land. You can't get to good land by yourself. The Lord's got to bring you. You can't fix some stuff by yourself. The Lord's got to bring you. You can't get out of some stuff that you put yourself in. God's got to bring you out. Do I have anybody can testify that God will bring you out? Do I have anybody that can testify? Even with cancer, he can bring you out. Even with COVID, he can bring you out. Even with stress, he can bring you out. I see you, Eureka, in a good land. I see you, sister. I came to tell somebody, you can't bring yourself, but God can bring you. You can't fix yourself, but God can fix you. You can't solve it by yourself, but God can sing. Solve it. Somebody shout, he will bring you. Somebody shout, he will bring you. 
Look at this. He, he, he's trying. What Joshua is doing is trying to, to, to calm the noise. But there are some folk that won't listen to reason. So he continues to press the case. He said, look, the Lord will bring us into a land. A land flowing with milk and honey and give it to us. He said, over here in the desert, we have neither milk nor honey. The only way we eat in the desert, God has a rain down manna and bring in quail. But when we get to the good place, it's going to be flowing. I came to tell somebody, you're not supposed to be barely making it, but you're supposed to be flowing. You're not supposed to be struggling. You're supposed to be flowing. You're not supposed to be pounding. You're supposed to be flowing. Look at somebody shout, it's flowing time. Look at somebody shout, it's flowing time. I need three of y'all on Facebook to write, it's flowing time. Let me tell you something. I hear you, Bernice. He's in flowing time. If you're not flowing this morning, it ain't nobody's fault but yours. How dare you say they won't let me flow? How dare you say he won't let me flow? How dare you say she won't let me flow? It's time for you to flow. It's time for you to bathe in milk and honey. So what? Flowing in milk and honey. Look at this. He said the land flowing in milk and honey and give it to us. Look at this. They didn't have to work for it. God was going to give it to them. They couldn't put it on the charge card. God was going to give it to them. I came to tell three folk who got enough faith this morning. The next big thing in your life that's going to happen. God's going to call somebody to just give it to you. You ain't going to have to beg for it. You ain't going to have to ask for it. God will send somebody to say, here it is. I need three folk to shout. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Look at this. So look at as Joshua continues to try to calm the noise, to quiet, to try to quiet the noise, it says in verse 9, only don't rebel against God and don't be afraid of the people in the land, for we will devour them. Joshua said, you can have the milk and honey, but don't fuss with God. You can have the grapes, but don't fuss with God. You can have prosperity, but let the noise go. You can get your blessing, but let the noise go. You can be the head and not the tail, but miss me with that noise. Somebody say, miss me with that noise. You know who's the biggest blocker to your blessing sometimes? It's not the devil. It's not a hater. It's not a family or friend. It's you, because you bought into the noise. You are your worst. You Stop that self-sabotaging. Stop self Sabotaging your dreams. Stop sabotaging your possibilities. Stop sabotaging your milk and your honey. Look at your name and say, it's go get it time. Say, it's go get it time. Look at this. He says, don't turn your back on God. He said, don't be afraid of the people. You see, the reason they made so much noise about the giants in the land. Now, the people had not seen the giants. Only the, the 12 spies had seen it. But they came back and said, we saw Andre the giant. We saw Yao Ming. We saw Akeem the dream, Abdul Elijah one. We saw Ralph Sampson. We saw all these tall giants in the land. But Joshua, speaking against the noise. He said, look, don't be afraid of the people in that land. I came to tell some of y'all, don't be afraid of the devil. Don't be afraid of the backstabbers. Don't be afraid of your enemy because your God is bigger than your devil. Your God is bigger than your hater. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Look, he says their protection has been removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Now, this is a good shout. He's trying to end the noise. He's trying to calm the noise. He says their protection has been removed. What he's saying, can I speak in military terms? He says God has disarmed them. The battle hadn't even started yet, but God has disarmed them. God has detonated that bomb. God 
has taken their power. You see, some of y'all, you are scared, and you don't know that God has already gone and talked to the judge. God has already gone and talked to the lawyer. God has already gone and talked to the doctor. God has already gone and talked to the employer. He has disarmed them. He has detonated them. You know, I grew up in the country. I never will forget. I was in the backyard picking peaches and a bumblebee stung me in the eye and I was crying and screaming. I ran in the house. My grandmother did snuff back then. She put a little snuff on it. She said, now quit crying. It'll stop hurting directly. She said, but the good thing is that bee can't sting you anymore because when his stinger came out, he died. I came to tell somebody God has already taken a stinger out of your enemy. They hurt you, but they can't hurt you no more. They stung you, but they can't sting you no more. Look at your neighbor say, no more stings. No more stings from the same beat. But mother player, even though I, I bleed my grandmother, as soon as my eye was no longer swollen, I went in the backyard and there was a bee on the ground dead. But I wanted to ensure that it was dead. So I grazed my size 10 foot and I stumped on that bee. It's time for some of y'all to stump on your bee. He's already dead, but make him extra dead. She's already dead, but make her extra dead. It's already dead. Dead, but make it extra dead. Look at somebody and show her extra dead. Welcome, Essence Babe. So glad to have you. Look at this. Look at this. He says, God has removed their protection. And look at this is the most important part because he uses a connecting conjunction. He said, and the Lord is with us. So there were two realities. The first reality was that God had removed their protection. But in the second reality was, and he's with us. God never takes you somewhere and leaves you there by yourself. Yourself. The Lord is with you in your struggle. The Bible says the Lord is with you in your pain. The Lord is with you in your disappointment. The Lord is with you in your hurt and your aggravation. The Lord is with you. Dr. Walker, how do you know the Lord is with me? Because you still here. Somebody died last night, but you still here. Somebody's in a morgue right now, but you still here. Somebody I had to sit down right now and they're planning their, their loved one's funeral but you are still here because the Lord is with you and because the Lord is with you you can make it because the Lord is with you you can do it somebody shout the Lord is with me some hello mother Amelda Lewis look at this look at this verse number 10 he said don't be afraid of them verse 10 while the whole community threatened to stone them the glory of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites at the tent of the meeting so even though Joshua tried to talk the noise out of them even though he tried to calm the noise these folk were so taken by the noise that they picked up rocks and they were about to stone Moses and they were about to stone Joshua and they were about to stone Caleb and, and, and the, so Joshua son of Nun and look they had the rocks in their hand let me tell you something you cannot be reasonable with unreasonable people you cannot be, I don't mean to be mean when I say this, but low IQ people, they will raise hello in the morning, hello in the evening and do it all over there are some folk that you can't be rational with so when you can't be rational you need to turn it over to God because the Bible says look at this when, when, when God saw them pick up the rocks the Bible says the glory of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites in the tent of the meeting so when they had gone too far God showed up the Bible says the Lord said to Moses how long will these people despise me how long will they not trust in me despite all the signs I have performed among them God said I brought them out of Egypt but now they're turning their back. I fed them when they didn't have food. But they didn't turn it. 
turn their back. They didn't even have to buy clothes for 40 years. They didn't have to go to Neiman Marcus. They didn't have to go to St. John. They didn't have to go to Louis Vuitton. They didn't have to go to Ross. They didn't have to go to Walmart. Because as their body grew, as their bodies grew, their clothes grew with their bodies. They didn't have to buy new shoes. Because as their feet grew, I made the shoe grow. And now how quick they are to forget. Look at somebody and say, bonus time. May I warn you this morning, don't forget how good God is. Don't forget the roof he put over your head. Don't forget the clothes on your back. Don't forget about the reasonable portion of your health and your strength. Somebody shout, God did it. Somebody shout, God did it. Look, at this is God talking, not Moses. God had gotten tired of the noise. He said, I will strike them with a plague, and I will destroy them. Then I will make you into a great and a mighty nation. You see, the noise will turn God against you. The noise will bring the judgment of God. God said, Moses, I'm about to get rid of them. Moses, I'm going to send a plague. Moses, I'm going to destroy them, and I'm going to take what's left and make you greater. Look at somebody and say greater. Look at somebody and say greater. It is the will of God for you to be greater. You don't deserve to be average. You don't deserve to be poor. You don't deserve to be broke. You don't deserve to be abused. You don't deserve to be confused. You deserve to be greater. Don't let nobody stand between you and being greater. Don't let no man stand between you and your greater. Don't let no woman stand between you and your greater. Don't let no job stand between you and your greater. I need three folks to shout greater. Marguerite Andrews greater. I need somebody to shout greater. Jackie Hodge. Somebody to shout greater. Look at this. Look at this. Now look at this. God is ready to move. God is ready to destroy. God is ready to judge. But verse 13 says, but Moses replied to the Lord, don't do it, Lord. You know how, you know how Sugar Avery told me, say, don't do it, Missy. So what God, what Moses said, don't do it, God. Don't do it, Jehovah Jireh. Say, God, I know there ain't no good. I know that they bark at me all the time. I know they said these nasty things. They didn't realize you were listen, but Lord, don't do it because if you do it, the Egyptians are going to hear about it, and the Egyptians are going to say, he brought them out, but he couldn't keep them. He delivered them, but he couldn't keep them. Can I tell you for 10 seconds, the God I serve, he's a keeper. He kept me last night, he kept me yesterday, and he's keeping me right now. Anybody being kept by God, he keeps your mind, he keeps your spirit, he keeps your determination. Look at somebody and say, I'm being kept. I'm being kept. I'm a kept man. I'm a kept woman. I'm a kept child of God. I know it's hard, but he's keeping me. I know it's difficult, but he's keeping you. Somebody shout, I'm kept. Look at this. Moses is pleading for the people. He says in verse number 15, if you kill this people with a single blow, the nations that have heard of your fame will declare God wasn't able to bring them from the wilderness to the promised land. He says, so now may my Lord's power be magnified. The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in faithful love, offering forgiving of sins. Moses says, look, God, you told me you're slow to anger. God said, yeah, I am. But I'm tired now. I never will forget it. One of the, my grandmother, I cut up Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and she didn't whip me. But I made her mad on Thursday. She said, I'm tired now, boy. Whenever you hear tired, you gonna get a beat down. When she got tired, the switch came out. I said, oh, I can handle the switch. But then the belt came out. And then she had a wet towel. A wet towel switch in a belt and from age 12 till she died when I was 26 I never got another with it so God said look I'm tired now he said these people look at Moses 
pastor says, please pardon them. God said, I will pardon them. But all of them are not going to the land of the promise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let some of them, I'm not going to get them right now. But it's coming down the road. This was a delayed thing. I'm so glad that God delayed some stuff. So he gives me another chance. Somebody shout another chance. They were on the precipice of possibility. They had an opportunity to get it right, but they had the noise. I came to tell somebody, it's time for you to stop listening to the noise. I know what the world is saying, but miss me with the world's noise. I know we're trying to get voting rights. I was with Senator Warnock in D.C. We're struggling to get voting rights, but the Republicans can miss me with that noise. Mitch McConnell missed me with the noise. I came and tell somebody, if you want to be blessed, you can't listen to the noise. You need to turn, tune out the noise, and you need to listen to one word. The Lord is with me. I came and tell somebody, the Lord is with you. In your storm, the Lord is with you. In your ups and your downs, the Lord is with you. He wants you in the good land. It's time to stop listening to the noise and march to the good land. Somebody say good land. Somebody say good land. In the good land, I got joy. In the good land, I got peace. In the good land, I got good credit. In the good land, I got a good house. In the good land, I got a good car. In the good land, I got joy. This joy that I have. Sharon Hart Chapel and all. You've listened to the wrong song long enough. I want to come closer to the camera. You've listened to the noise long enough. You need to make a decision today. Miss me with the noise. Miss me with the ignorance. Miss me with the stupidity. Miss me with the low IQ stuff. Miss me with the hate. Miss me with the backstabbing. Miss me with the games. Miss me with the strong. For those of you who never heard me use the word strong, strong is a combination of stress and drama. Miss me with the strong. I don't have time for the noise. Do you know why people make noise in your life? Because you let them. Let me squat down and look you in the camera. The reason that people make so much noise in your life is you allow it to. If you don't like what's happened to you, take back the power that you gave. Put those hands together and give God some praise. You are not, you don't deserve that noise. And, and some folk, they're in the same place of noise today that they were last year this time. What a tragedy. New year, but same noise. New month, but same noise. No week. Same noise. At some point, you're going to have to let the noise go. So I need you to go home today after this sermon. Some of you, 90% of y'all are at home. I need you after this worship service to put out a piece of paper or your tablet or your phone and write down everything that's causing noise in your life on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, say, miss me with this noise.
The noise can only be as loud as you allow it to be. The noise can only stay if you welcome it. So what you need to do is to unwelcome the noise. Every head bowed, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We come against the noise this morning. We come against those things that are making noise in our lives. The things that are, the noise that's holding us back. The noise that's hampering us. The noise that's debilitating us. The noise that's stunning our growth. We come against it. Lord, let the noise miss us. Lead us to the good land. Lead us to the good place. Lead us to the good space. No more noise. No more noise. No more noise. Deliver us from the noise. Let us follow leadership, Lord. Let us follow the man of God that you placed our Moses, our Joshua to lead us. Let Never let us turn our backs on you. Because as Joshua told him in the midst of that noise, the Lord is with us. Let somebody feel your presence right now, even as I pray. Let somebody feel your power, even right now as I pray. Let somebody bump into you in a big way tonight, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So let somebody feel your presence. Lord, let the noise miss us. In Jesus' name, everybody shout, amen. amen. Everybody shout, amen. amen. Jack and the athletes. Monica's going to come quickly and sing. Monica's going to come stand beside me and sing. We're going to open the doors of the church. There may be somebody, there may be some man, some woman, some boy or girl that's not a member of the temple. We're going to ask you this morning to come. We're going to ask that you come. We're going to ask, not that you join the church, but you join Jesus at the church. That you, this is a good land, the temple of faith. I don't repeat that the temple of faith Bible church is good land. And here we get the milk and honey from God's word. And it flows into our finances. It flows into our good health. It flows into our peace and our joy and our understanding. So I invite you today to simply type the word member in the comments. Monica, you begin to sing. You can type uh, member in the comment section. Maybe you haven't been baptized. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is a perfect opportunity. We'd love to baptize you. We'd love to baptize you. All you got to do is type the word member Help in the comment section. That's all you got to do. Everybody needs a church. Everybody needs a Moses. Everybody needs a Joshua to lead them into the place, the good space where God wants you to be. So if that's you today, simply just type the word member in the comment section. Well, he picked me up. Oh, yeah, he picked me up. Turned me around. Placed my feet on solid ground. Everything that happened. Everything to that me, happened. That was good, God. Did. Oh, yeah, that's the right song. Oh, well, yes, he did. Everything that happened to me, that was good, God did. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did.
Facebook, the comments are off the charts. It's often time. The Bible says in Corinthians, a man or woman gives as his purpose in their heart. Then it says, and the Lord loves a cheerful giver. It's time for our tithes and offering. If you're in the sanctuary, there's the offering box. You can simply drop your offering in the offering box. If you're online, there are three ways in which you can give. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Brother John Miles, who's already given, Sister Rachel Hamilton, who's already given, Dr. Rachel Hamilton. There are three ways in which you can give. Cash app. Cash App Augustus Ministries. Thank you, Joseph, for your offering. Cash App Augustus Ministries. Then the second way you can give, the Give by app, which Brother John Miles at 72 years old uses. Uh, he knows how to go and use that technology. You can give on the Give by app. Give by is simply Temple of Faith Bible Church. Give by app is Temple of Faith Bible Church. The third way, you can go to the church website, Temple of Faith Bible Church .org, online giving PayPal. PayPal will drop down give on the PayPal. One more time, three ways to give. Number one, Cash App, Augustus Ministries. Number two, you can go to the Giveify app, which I'm going to have to use today. I don't have my checkbook. The Giveify app, Temple of Faith Bible Church. Temple of Faith Bible Church. Find a way. www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org online giving PayPal. We thank you for your offering. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the tithes and offering that finance your vision tithe and offering that runs your church a tithe and offering that allows us to do ministry we thank you for every single dollar today let them give the bible says give and it shall be given to you press down run it over shake it together so today lord we are givers divine givers divine tithers divine offering givers in your name we all shouted amen amen i'm going to we're going to stay on live so y'all stay there everyone with pink including you dr Jones, come stand on bring that stand i'm going to do the group shot because i want you to picture reggie Reggie, I want you in the picture because you got on pink today. 
you got short sleeve feet. Okay, snap. Get in front of the people, okay? Miss Plant, Mother Clay. Everybody with me. Let me brother me. Stand in front of the pulpit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in the back. Yeah, I'm gonna curve it. Yeah, curve it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Theo, you need to come in. I mean, I'll jump, jump and come in. Uh, what's the boy name? Taylor, go close to your mom. Go close to your mom. Jump, you're out, so you gotta come in. Okay, if nobody moves, Thea, stand on the other side of your Oh, no, no, stay right there. Mother player, come over a little bit. No, no, nobody, Reggie, look straight. Yeah, nobody moves. I'm going to come get him and put the timer on. I'm going to put a five second timer. Everybody smile. All right, real good. You can go back to your seat. Everyone online that has on pink, Make sure you text. If you have my cell phone number, text me your pink. If not, church email. T uh, Temple of Faith Bible Church at AL. Uh, I forgot the church email. I know it. Um, or you can Facebook Messenger me. Facebook Messenger. Just drop it in the Facebook. We want you to do that. I'm going to do the announcements uh, from here. Uh, I had an amazing time by myself doing street ministry yesterday. It was simply incredible. Uh, the young people helped me with the snacks and just distribution of clothes. But as you saw on my Facebook page, the biggest blessing yesterday, the biggest blessing, uh, Councilwoman Johnson, who's a councilwoman for that part of Clark, she and her husband brought a pickup truck full of bananas, apples, zucchini, squash, uh, chicken, uh, strip green beans. I've got to put some green beans in my pocket. They were going so fast. It was amazing. We we gave over 50 families food. Yes, people come out from Woodworks. Uh, one girl told me that there were 10 people who lived in her house. So we gave her a whole big box of onions, uh, zucchini, squash. We ran out of cucumbers. I mean, they also had cucumbers as well. So it was a glorious day at Street Ministry on yesterday. Uh, we will have the baby shower. Seraphina was there yesterday. Uh, she wanted to know where the baby daddy was, and I said, lecture. So, um, <laughs> Seraphina, you caught that money. So, uh, not just you sharp today, boy. So, all you, you, I'm gonna give you a pair, I'm gonna get you a pair of these no, Christmas. Let me see what's in your socks. Let me see what's in your socks, Oh, boy. You can you better than me, because I got on Mrs. Spock. I got on Star Trek. So, so uh, we will have the baby shower. If you have items for the baby shower, which is going to have a boy next month, please make arrangements. My schedule is crazy this week, but I'll try to work it out to see you if you have something in Atlanta. Or you can send a cash app donation. Just put baby shower, and we'll go pick something up a little bit. Dr. Jones, I believe you have some items. Now, when I came in last night, you had toys in here when I came to record. Okay. Uh, but that's not for the baby shower. That's for regular toys. Uh, Thea donated five bo uh, bags of clothes. Jeremy, you have those clothes at Thea's? Thea, where are you? Right here. Thea, what, what's in those bags? I don't even know if I need to go to, uh, to, the, to the storage this week. It's, it's, and I have 10 more at home, so I'll bring what I have. No, I'm saying, what are the bags at his house? What's in that? That's women clothes, men clothes. Okay, so keep the ones at your house. Bring those five for, for, for a Saturday. Clothes, clothes. And you never bring them. Okay, next time is this Saturday. Okay, so um, John, bring those five bags from Thea, then you bring your toys and the baby stuff. Um, and then I did some shopping for the new baby. The new baby is two months. Okay, y'all bring that baby. It's no, did she, they were out of diapers, so I went to get diapers and even a coat and a jumper, so I, I got that myself on yesterday. So we we're really excited about that. Uh, so please join us. Uh, we will not be in the sanctuary on Sunday. Normally I'm out of the country, but I can't travel right now because of the Atlanta mayor's race. Felicia Morton needs me in town this week, and so I'm going to be here. I don't know where I'm going to do the live from. I may be in Stone Mountain, it may be in Piedmont Park, so I don't know. But the band and the music musicians are all for this week. Uh, so please tune in Sunday morning, Wednesday night. We're coming Wednesday night. Wednesday night, uh, our Bible studies are crazy good, aren't they?
If the Bible says it's been a blessing, you put those hands together and give God some praise right now. Mark, you come once, maybe two months. So, so I'm just messing with Mark. Uh, so what happens is we're on the crucifixion of Jesus Christ now. Finally, we're down to that part with John. So invite someone to watch with you. Thank everyone for your tithes and your offering. This one, Monica, bring me that phone because I'm monitoring on this phone and I can't see. I'm getting ready to say bye to you. I thank everyone. Thank you for your offering, whatever you gave in the offering today. Monica, I'm serious. The comments on you singing that song, she always picks the right songs. Uh, Natasha, I got your picture. Thank you, Wendy Matayo. I got your picture. Uh, or here's a text. Dr. Howard says, good morning, Temple of Faith. Good morning. What a wonderful service. Stop listening to the noise. The same B, and I mean, can sting again. I'm kept. We're glad to have so many online viewers here. Um, Natasha, thank you so much. I got your picture. Don't forget now, if you have, uh, I, I want you to send me your picture. We're going to post the pictures after worship. Well, again, no live worship. We try to give fifth Sundays off so they can get a rest. I know, Monica, you like that you have to make that long drive this week. So we look forward to, again, street ministry and baby shower Saturday at 1130. Now, listen, I know how accessible I am. Y'all look at the text and talk to me. Please don't disturb me. I need rest. I've been in four cities this week. And then when I flew home from the fourth city, I came straight to street ministry, did that. And I had to come in last night to record a sermon for Alpha, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity for Alpha South, something new that we've created from the office of the chaplaincy called uh, Alpha South Soul for Sundays, a 15 minute inspirational message. That should debut today, I think. I sent them to upload last night. So I need to rest. And rarely do I text on Saturday. If, but street ministry is one thing, but I can study and prepare. I'm not plus, I'm just saying, I got, I'm not Superman. I know I look like it some days, but I am not Superman. I'm not Clark Kent. And if you text me in the last 36 hours, I'm going to text back. It'll be later when I wake up from my nap today or early in the morning. But I thank you all. I love you. Don't forget street ministry, Saturday, 1130, and the baby shower. Bible study Wednesday night. No live worship. Um, Dr. Josh, you sent me some announcements. Uh, there's something I'm forgetting, so y'all just hold on. Hold on, hold on. I see the afro. Breast, yeah, this is the last, this month's the last month of breast cancer awareness. Let's lift these sisters up who've been stricken by breast cancer as they heal and they go forth. Let's continue to pray for our kids as they go to school in the midst of COVID. Please get those vaccinations. If you're eligible for a booster shot, get the booster. If you have the booster shot, this today, let me see your hand in the sanctuary. Okay, so very good, very good. Monica, are you eligible? She, you, your neck? Okay. Tim is sticking in your head. Okay, so please get that booster shot uh, so you can, we can get out of this pandemic. We can get better because the flu season is coming upon us. I, have the, I got the booster. I got the flu shot. I got the pneumonia shot. I even asked my doctor, I said, anything else you give? He said, you can't get nothing. Now. You got all that you else before. So get what you can and get it and stay healthy. Okay, we're going to say bye to you. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Let me go back to the Facebook. It's, it's still early. It's not even 12 o'clock. So you can go home and you can uh, relax, watch it. Hey, Atlanta Braves, hey! Congratulations to Braves Day. Reggie finally got a winner. The Braves are going to the World Series. I just feel like it's their year because they came out of nowhere. When you beat the Dodgers, the defending World Series champion, man, that says a lot. Rosario hit that home run, that three run blast last night. It kept getting up. It kept getting up. Uh, so let us be excited about the Braves World Series start this week. Marguerite, you have a safe, great week too. Come back to Georgia safely. Deborah Allen, thank you. May God be glorified in his word. Kimberly Miles, be safe. Dean, that's Jackie Hodge on behalf of Pastor Walker and the entire Temple family. We thank you for joining us. Join us today for one Wednesday for one Wednesday. Fresh Friday prayer call on Friday morning at 7 a.m. Okay.